Why is crispy aromatic duck so popular? I mean, it's crispy on the outside, shreddable on the inside, falling off the bone, packed full of all these sort of mellow spices, and it has this sort of sweet, salty flavor to it. It's the perfect food, isn't it? Happy Chinese New Year. It's the year of the tiger, and this video is sponsored by Neff Gonghei Fat Choy. Welcome back to Walk Wednesdays. I'm Jeremy from School of Walk Covent Garden. This week's Walk Wednesday is sponsored by our friends Neff. And I'll tell you more about those guys later. Now, this is one of those dishes that perhaps you've never cooked before. And I can see why it can be a little bit daunting. The idea of cooking crispy duck at home is a little bit scary, but I'm here to simplify it and show you actually how simple it can be. There are a few processes to it, but enjoy it, relax, enjoy your cooking. I'm gonna break it down into a few simple steps and the first one is blanching your duck and I'm using duck legs as opposed to a whole duck just to make it that much easier for home cooking. So the first thing is blanch your duck. You wanna blanch it in boiling hot water for about three to five minutes. So you'll see when you're pouring the hot water over the duck legs, that it kind of contracts immediately. And you're essentially blanching it to, to bring out the fatty impurities and any sort of scum that sits at the top of the water. Once you've blanched it, drain it, cool it, just under, under the cold tap. And then we're gonna make up sort of the flavor and this sort of brining, this salt that will rub all around the duck. So you wanna roughly chop your spring onions and then bash your ginger out. Make sure that ginger's peeled and then that's all gonna go straight in with my brining salt later on. Now with my base spices, I've got a whole load of base spices here that essentially make up five spice or the core ingredients of five spice. Got some cinnamon stick, some star anise and then some mandarin peel. Now if you can't find dried mandarin peel, just use fresh mandarin peel. We're gonna to toast that all up in a dry pan, no oil. Once you've got that lovely sweet aroma coming off the spices and the pan, you can pour those straight over the duck legs. And then we're gonna add some Himalayan pink salt. You can use rock salt, which is slightly thicker, or Himalayan salt it has that sort of mild saltiness to it, which is absolutely great for brining. Got some Shaoxing rice wine all over, and that'll melt that salt through. Give that a good rub around the duck legs. Now I'm gonna put this straight into a food bag so that I, when it's sitting, and I want it to sit overnight for a good 24 hours, it really, all that flavor in the sole and all that flavor from the spices wraps around the duck legs. You wanna leave that for a minimum of 24 hours. If it goes to 48, fine, but don't go any further than that because it'll get super salty. After at least a day, your duck, would have sort of marinated in that brine solution and you, it will sort of really sort of have tightened up the skin. And what this does is that when I come to steam it, I'm gonna steam this for a good sort of couple of hours, it will sort of have that real saltiness in the skin, but the skin itself will get sort of tighter and tighter and tighter from that salt drawing out the moisture. I'm actually gonna put this into our Neff slide and hide oven is actually a steam oven along with a conventional oven and it's got your grill functions and all the great functions you'd expect from an everyday good oven. And it's on a 100% steam function, which is what this dish is perfect for. But if you don't have a steam oven, you can put it into a normal steam basket or just have a plate sitting in a wok on top of a heat proof bowl with water inside and then covered with a lid, you will have to keep topping up the water as we will with the steam oven every sort of 20 or 30 minutes. So you want that duck to steam on full steam for two hours. So that, you know, with a couple of hours, I've got good time to tell you guys a good story, a good duck story. And I was on holiday once and there was a, a, a duck that sort of turned up in the garden out of nowhere and it just befriended me. It came right up to me and I had a piece of bread. I was just finished lunch, I had a piece of bread in my hand and I started sort of teasing it a little bit and it kept wanting to eat my bread. Of course, me being me, 
I just had a little play. And it kept jumping up every time I was sort of offering it a bit of bread. And all I could think about was crispy duck. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst your duck's steaming, you've got loads of time to do whatever you want, really. But you may as well cut up your cucumber and your spring onion too. I'm gonna slice that into both of them into thin matchsticks. So the ducks had two hours in the steam oven and that's been on full steam. I've had to top up the water once or twice. And that's really, should have really sort of slow cooked that duck. And that's what makes it able to sort of shred apart once I've deep fried it. Once it's come out of the steam oven, you wanna let it cool. You know, it needs to be fully cool to room temperature at least before you look to deep fry it. You also wanna pat the duck legs dry so that they're as dry as possible before you go to the frying process. When you're deep frying your duck, you wanna start your oil on a nice high heat. So you're looking at about 180 degrees C. Test it with your chopsticks. If your wooden chopsticks fizz immediately, then you're at the right temperature. Lay your duck in carefully. It might spit a little when it goes straight in. After about 30 seconds or so, turn your heat right down to a low heat and let that bubble away for about five to six minutes. Now, why is it called crispy aromatic duck? I think we kind of get that as soon as this hits the fryer. Because as it hits the fryer, you get this almost like sweet aroma from the mandarin peel and the star anise and the cinnamon that's sitting in that brining liquid from the salt or mixed together with the salt in the rice wine. And because that's sat into the duck over a minimum of a day, 24 hours, it's really sort of penetrated the flavor into the meat and the skin itself. That is what makes proper, crispy, aromatic duck. Whilst your duck's resting for the last sort of three to five minutes, you want to swap out the oil, that hot oil, carefully. Just pop that into a heat-proof bowl and then bring half a wok full of water to the boil and get your pancakes on to steam. Steam them for five minutes. With that slow cook from the steam, this duck should literally just fall off the bone. You can shred it with a spoon or a fork and it should just come straight off. This is gonna be the crispiest duck you will ever have tasted. I mean, this is pretty self-explanatory to me. You know, you wanna get your hoisin sauce over the top of your pancake, a little bit of cucumber and spring onion, because it works perfectly, you know, the sweetness of the hoisin sauce just cuts through the duck itself. The salty, crispy, succulent duck inside, wrap that up and shove it in. This sort of recipe is worth the time. Give yourselves the weekend, get your duck ready, maybe even on a Friday night, and then cook this on a Sunday, finish it off on a Sunday, and you will not be disappointed. There are other recipes like this that are, I guess, a little bit more complex on the channel. Check them out here. But complex does not mean difficult. There are more steps than a quick, simple midweek recipe, but, this is well worth the work. Thank you so much to Neff for your awesome steam ovens. And that just steamed away and I didn't really have to think about it. And most important, thank you to my duck for giving me so much pleasure. <laughs>